Hey guys, so today's video is going to be showing you how to weld an aluminum block. So you see this is an old 5 horsepower Briggs that threw a rod at some point in its life. Went all the way through the block here. So now today we're going to fix it, hopefully. Also, just noticed a while ago that this cover's got a crack all the way through it too. So we might show this after it's welded, just as a kind of a before and after. main thing we're going to concentrate on is this block. So a few things we got to do before we can just start welding. So I kind of already did the first step a couple of years ago actually. It'll have to be redone, but this is uh, sanded down. You don't really want to use a grinder, because then you get little pieces of metal and stuff embedded into this. It'll just cause a, you know, it's a contaminant to the weld. Then in this case, I'm going to try to cut it out just a little bit here, then weld a bigger piece of metal on around the edge here. That way it's, it could, it's not going to, it's going to help keep it uh, flat and everything when I'm welding. So I'm going to try to do some of this off camera to speed it up. I don't want to bore you all with a long video. Um, but yeah, let's just get to prepping this a little bit. We're going to be using 40-43 rods. These are stick rods for, these are rods for a stick welder obviously. We've got two different sizes and I'll determine which one will be the best size, probably the smallest one and go from there and you have to use a dc welder stick welder it's got the amperage on here 50 to 80 amps dc electrode positive arc welding aluminum is kind of it's not the best method for repairing aluminum but it's one of the few ways that you can do it in your own garage without having to pay somebody to do it especially if you already have a dc stick welder you know if you get a dc mig welder you can get the aluminum spool gun but you have to have you know, argon and all that stuff for doing that. This is kind of the, the simplest DIY way of doing it uh, besides the luminol or luma weld, which I absolutely do not recommend. I've had nothing but bad luck with that, so I'll never try that again. Uh, it's basically like a, a brazing rod for aluminum and it just don't work. This is the best way I've found. I did fix an 8 horsepower Briggs and I, never, I made a video of it, but I never put it up. Uh, so I might show just a little bit of that too after this is done. So uh, let's just get started on it. And so this is the time you definitely want to have your safety glasses on because um, aluminum is bad to get in your eyes. Of course anything is as far as that matter. But if you get a piece of steel in your eyes or iron, they can actually take a you know a magnetic needle and get it out of your eye. Whereas it's something like this, it's going to be a lot more, especially if it's hot and it burns itself in. So we're just going to kind of open this up a little bit just to get a little bit of a cleaner work area. Kind of like when you do body work on a car, you want to get all the rust of that, which and this is not a problem with that, but we're just trying to freshen this up, get a little bit better results with. I'm just using this uh, cutoff tool. I may have to end up going to a Dremel, not for sure yet. Okay, get that cut out. I'm going to try to clean up in little thin pieces that's left in the corner. And I forgot to mention, after this is prepared, I'm going to do an acetone cleaning of this area where it's going to be welded. And uh, you got to work quick with aluminum because it oxidizes so fast. There's nothing thing that makes it so challenging. As soon as you stop welding with it, once that rod comes off, the tip of it oxidizes, so you get it grinded again right before you start. So it's very tricky to work with. So hopefully I can do all this in one single pass. And what I'm thinking about doing, which I didn't do before, you get better results because aluminum absorbs the heat, which is why they make heat sinks and stuff out of aluminum and cooling fins and stuff. So I'm gonna put this on my hot plate Lay it down like this to get the whole block up to you know, probably, I'm going to guess, four to 500 degrees probably. Because aluminum melts at uh, over a thousand degrees. For some reason I can't think of the exact number right off the top of my head. But uh, you want to keep the whole block warm. This is true too with welding cast iron. But you can weld cast iron in a very similar way with using the same welder. You have to have a DC welder and use nickel rods for that. So let me get this prepared a little bit more. We're going to use a flap disc on a grinder. Mm 
but that's about what you want. You want to go out further on this to avoid contamination. We're going to try to cut the piece of metal about an eighth inch bigger than this all the way around. And this is the piece of aluminum I got to work with. It's an eighth inch thick, two inches wide, and it was three foot long. We've used it for other things. But it's just the perfect width for this. I had it planned up before. I've had this piece of metal for a while. Aluminum is very messy to work with. Got stuff everywhere. Okay, so I got the piece cut out and cleaned up. Okay, just like that. It's not going to matter so much if it don't fit on there just right and it rocks because it'll be welding all the way around this anyway. But if it's excessive, you can always just bend it just a little bit. Um, which I would kind of like to put in a little bit of a bend on this one edge where it starts going down. It's really not that bad though. Your most critical thing is just to make sure that this don't move when you first start welding. I'm also going to try to weld on the inside too, which you don't necessarily have to, but I think it's uh, best to, but we'll determine that after we do this. Now you may want to put a bevel on this too. Aluminum is not quite like steel, and I don't remember if I did that on the last one I fixed. Now if you're doing this on the engine that say has a starter that mounts right here, this would be like um, uh, some engines will have a starter on this side. Sometimes it's on the other side, it just depends on the engine. But you want to make sure that something like this is not going to interfere with mounting that or something else onto the engine. So if that's going to be an issue, you want to cut this out the exact same. That way this is level with it. Because you can only grind this down so much without grinding through it. Uh, but you, we'll definitely be grinding the welds are down here, unless we get a beautiful weld. But I doubt that. It's hard to get a good weld with this type of a setup. So now we're pretty much ready to clean everything and start welding. Uh, I'm just going to wipe everything down with acetone just a few minutes before I start welding. Alright, so this is my setup. I decided to just use the heat gun to keep some heat going into that block and let it get good and warm. Uh, it's just barely starting to get warm at this point. But all right, I want to talk briefly about the welder I got to use. This is a titanium Harbor Freight Stick 225 to run off 120 or 240. That's what I have set up for 240 right now. It goes up to 225 amps. I'll have to double check the rod to see what we're going to set it up. It's set up for electro positive. So the positive is connected to the stinger. I'm pretty much ready so this warms up. I'll try to record this as much as I can. Uh, go from there guys. I already wiped this down with acetone. You can only clean up so much. I'm going to try to cool this down as slowly as possible. If it slows down too fast, it'll crack everything. So you got to take your time with it. So let it run on the high for a little bit, and it switches the low here in a few minutes, then let it cool down on its own. Okay, so I got the oil sump here in the vise, and I tried to grind down most of it the best I could, but I wanted to show you how critical it is to you know, pay attention to the cracks and stuff. So watch that crack almost disappear when I tighten this up. So I'm going to run a quick little weld here on the inside real quick in the vise then jump right back over to the welding table. I'm going to do this off camera. I just wanted to share that with you on there. Okay guys, so it's cooled down now. I'm going to try to clean this up a little bit with a wire brush and see what the weld itself looks like. Hopefully it looks better than the flux does. <laughs> really hard to get this stuff off. So let me work with it and we'll look at it here in a minute. So here's pretty much what it looks like. It looks a little rough. I'm going to grind it down just a hair and we'll look at it and test it for leaks. I said grind but I'm using a flap disc on the grinder. Works perfect on aluminum.
So that makes it look a lot better getting the, the globs off. It's hard to get a good bead with that. At least it takes practice on anything. I'm not the best with it. I'm only concerned about this one side. See, there's a little pores right here. So if it's going to leak, it'll probably be on this side. But we'll find out possibly over through here. If you grind this down too much, you're going to come through the piece that you welded in. And you don't want to do that. It looks good on the inside. We're going to weld on this side too. I decided to do it. I just got to clean this area up around this a little bit. So in order to test for leaks, I like to pour acetone like over this. And it did appear to seep out just a little bit around this top and this one side. Not very much. So by the time I weld the inside, we should get a perfect seal on it. So now I'm going to clean this off and weld this off camera. Okay guys, we got a perfect seal. Uh, not so much a perfect look. You want to make sure there's no pieces of like slag and stuff left in here. So you don't want to get mixed up into the engine oil and stuff and possibly cause internal damage. Uh, what the outside looks like. That's where it burnt through just a little bit. So you got to watch aluminum. You can dress this up more, but you're just taking a chance of making it uh, leak or getting a grinding through. Uh, this box is probably going to be painted anyway. Um, so it's up to you, you know, you could take a, like JV Weld or something, go around this edge here and just to smooth it out a little bit if you wanted to. I may do that before it's painted, I'm not sure yet. Um, but yeah, it's definitely not perfect, but it's sealing. Another thing, you want to make sure this is flush with the block on the inside. You don't want nothing humped up. And uh, that way you take a chance of your rod or the crankshaft hitting something. You don't definitely don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude this video. I do have, still have some welding left to do on this. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera. You'll see it on the assembly video of the engine. It's the same thing. Anytime you get cracks like this, you want to kind of grind down into them to get to stop cracking. This is going to be kind of hard to clean up inside here enough to weld, but we'll go ahead and do this off camera. So, so when I was welding this part right here on it, it burnt all the way through, and I had to fill in a hole just about big enough for my finger right there. And that proved to be challenging uh, to build up the aluminum like you do on a steel weld. So I got to make sure I get all this slag and everything off this side. We should have a good seal, and I got to file this smooth. It's still higher than the rest of it, so I'm going to be filing all that just to make sure I don't take it down too far. And I mean, it's not bad, but it could be better. But it is what it is. I got a little carried away with the sander right there where the bolt goes in, but it's just going to have to be okay. Well, guys, if you got any questions or comments about welding? about welding aluminum engine blocks feel free to leave a comment below I'm not an expert on this subject by any means I'm just a DIYer that's sharing my knowledge with you and if you have a DC stick welder this is going to be your cheapest way to fix aluminum uh, I actually bought this welder just to be able to do this but you can weld steel with it too of course and cast iron and everything so that's only the second time this welder has been used well to weld aluminum so well, guys, thanks for watching, and like I said, we'll catch you in the next video. Thank you. Thanks for watching.